Welcome to church. Just a few announcements. Uh, youth groups for Hope and Carol are hopefully going to start this coming week. Monday for Caro, 6.30, and Thursday at 6 o'clock for Hope. The Sunday School at Caro is handing things out for people to do at home. The Hope Sunday School is hoping to start soon um, with some uh, combination of online and in-person uh, workshops and worksheets. Uh, details will be coming as uh, the cold settle down. The Kids Club at St. Andrew's Carroll will continue to receive monthly mailings for each member for the time being. A big thank you from the Breen family, that's my family, a big thank you from the Breen family for all the support, encouragement, prayers, cards and gifts over the last few weeks for Ryan. We do not feel like we're facing this challenge of Ryan getting this bone marrow transplant alone, but with great amounts of love and support. So please continue to pray that Ryan's body accepts the new bone marrow that he, is, uh, that he has already had transplanted and a speed, speedy recovery with minimal side effects might occur. A thank you to the Sunday School teachers, Robin and Janice, for continuing to come up with creative solutions for the St. Andrews Caro Sunday School um, as they're receiving their lessons. If you would like lessons and you're not on the list, uh, contact uh, myself at Hope Church or uh, um, uh, the secretary at St. Andrew's Carroll's official board. Also, today is, believe it or not, St. Andrew's Carroll's 149th anniversary. Now, we can't mark it with the normal special service where we close Hope and everybody attends um, because our guest speaker didn't want to come and you can't stay for a lunch. So, in an informal way with regular services during COVID-19, we will talk about this 149th anniversary with the hope and plans that the 150th next year should be a special one. Uh, guest speakers, uh, I am going to be leading worship for the foreseeable future, but when Ryan first gets home after his bone marrow transplant, I am hoping to take two weeks off to, to support him and to protect him um, uh, because he's not supposed to be a left alone uh, as soon as for the first time that he gets home plus he's going to have some appointments in London at least twice a week so I will gonna I'm gonna take two weeks off and I have some lay preachers um, Marie McNally and Brian Aiken who are going to fill in and they are willing to have a little bit of flexibility as we're not entirely sure which date Ryan's coming home. So stay tuned and you will be knowing things as soon as we know things. With that in mind, let us sit back, relax, focus our attention on God and celebrate his love and his presence and his guidance. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we come into your presence on this Sunday, this normally would have been the anniversary celebration of St. Andrew's Carroll Church, and it would have been our 149th anniversary. Well, it technically is our 149th anniversary, Lord. 
So we thank you for the men and the women who have faithfully passed on their faith in you, Jesus, from generation to generation through the life and work of this small country church. And Lord, it is easy to get impatient with how long this virus is taking to settle down, especially as there seems to be an increased number of cases again. So Lord, help us to take the eternal view and the long view of how we live here and now can enable us to store up treasures in heaven rather than here on earth. Help us to realize that the wealth of this world, we can't take it with us. And so, Lord, we need you and your guidance, forgiveness, and help, and the scriptural teachings to help us learn to live for your eternal kingdom here and now. Lord, help us learn how to do that in our current understanding. Meanwhile, God, we do thank you for the blessings you've given us. For my son Ryan's doing so well after his bone marrow transplant, uh, continue to bless him. For the loving help and prayers and support we have a family have received uh, from our uh, churches and church families. And Lord, for the willingness people have to adapt, uh, our willingness have to adapt, to adapt to the Sunday school, youth group, and other ministries for these days. We also thank you for Barbara, who grew up in our church and just got a full-time job at the Guelph Hospital. We think of Kyle, who grew up in our church and has just gotten engaged to Megan. And we thank you for Sandra, who's improving from a small stroke in August. God, for all of these blessings, we give you thanks and praise. And yet we admit that we're still tempted to live for what is right in front of us. It seems so easy to see this world in its comforts and ease. Forgive us for the times when we seek this world's wealth and comfort over the gifts and the promises of your eternal kingdom. Help us to understand how we need to focus on you and your eternal uh, rewards because that is what is wisest. It's better to be willing to seek those than just things that we can't take with us. So forgive us, Lord, for this sin or for any other sins that weigh heavy upon our hearts and minds. Lord, hear our silent prayers of confession. Gracious and forgiving God, help us to continue to grow and change, to follow your calling, and to grow in your ways, the ways of your eternal kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' strong name. Amen. The first reading today is from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 11 to 18. 
Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you ought to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. As you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming, that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort as they do to the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you already know this, be on your guard, so that you may not be carried away by error of lawless men and fall from the secure position. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and G Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. The responsorial psalm can be found on Psalm 116, verses 7 to 14. Be at rest once more, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I said, I am greatly afflicted. And in my dismay I said, All men are liars. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people.
Let us pray. Lord, as we look into the scriptures today and we complete the readings of, and the study of First and Second Peter's letters, we ask that you would bless us. As we go from this time, may we be taught by you that while we can't take the wealth of this world with us, we can store up for ourselves treasures, eternal treasures in your kingdom. Help us to learn how to do this in Jesus' name and to continue to pass on the faith as has been done for so many years through St. Andrew's Carroll on its anniversary, 149. Amen. Well, in today's message, it's about Peter's last words. His last words to his readers, summing up both his letters and in some ways his entire ministry. Because, as tradition teaches us, it looks like Nero is about to kill him for being a Christian and not being a loyal pagan. And so today's message is a big picture kind of message, asking his readers to realize that this mortal world will not survive. Instead, it will be destroyed and replaced with a new heaven and a new earth, which will be a home of righteousness. That is, the kingdom of God. And so Peter wants us to be focused on and investing in this eternal kingdom, not this present world. So, just as a certain point when wise people stop spending too much money on repairing an aging vehicle because it will not last, and at a certain point, it's not worth repairing anymore. So we as believers should not spend too much time on this world, but instead make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with Him, that is, the Lord. In other words, we make every effort to live out this kingdom here on earth, that is, God's kingdom here on earth, as best we can. And as Corey said last week, Store up for ourselves treasures in heaven. Then Peter warns us to be on our guard so that we'll not be carried away by the error of lawless men and fall from our secure position. So let's not be distracted. Don't invest too much time or money in that old car, or that is, this mortal life, so that we as, God, as Peter's readers would not lose a good place in the eternal kingdom of God. So this week, let us look in more detail on how we can live out Peter's final instructions about where we need to focus our lives and treasures, because, as they say, you can't take it with you. So, let's begin. In our world, people like to live and act as if this mortal world is all that exists, and so they invest all their time, their money and energy, storing up treasures here on earth. The problem is that, as Jesus put it, don't store up treasures for yourself on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But instead, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. As we said earlier, you can't take it with us. So through our own personal deaths or through the coming of God's kingdom, we need to store up treasures that last forever in God's kingdom, not the wealth of this world. Now, as a kid, I love studying ancient civilizations, and ancient Egypt is one of my favorite. The pyramids, the mummies, it all appears that the ancient Egyptians did everything they could to try and take it with them. But as archaeology shows us, their attempts, though heroic, fell short. People still died, and their wealth stayed in the pyramids and didn't go on to the next life. So the smartest thing we human beings can do is realize that storing up treasures in God's kingdom is way more worth than storing up treasures on earth because we can't take it with us. And if we do this, according to Peter, we do this, sorry, by, according to Peter, living a holy and godly lives. As we look forward to the day of God speeding and speed, it's coming. What does this mean? It's not about seeking what is most fun or comfortable or easy. It is about doing what's most loving and kind and right from God's point of view. This means we seek long-term and best benefits over short-term comfort and ease. Take my son Ryan's situation. 
In order to get healthy and to get cured from his aplastic anemia, he has had a bone marrow transplant a week ago yesterday. Before he chose this course of action, the doctors and nurses had to warn him about what would happen and could go wrong. First, he would receive chemo and radiation treatments that would cause nausea, fevers, mouth sores, hair loss, and weight loss. Then, when the new bone marrow is grafting itself into his body, the old immune system, even though it had been weakened, will still try to fight the new immune system. And while they can't predict exactly how this fight will work out, it could have anything from temporary rashes and mouth sores, which are easily treated, right across to permanent damage of any joint or tissue. Now, while the permanent damage is rare and almost never happens, it is a possibility. And they had to tell him also to expect by day 10, which is tomorrow, would likely be the worst he would feel with fever, mouth sores, and digestive issues that may not allow him to eat for a few days or even a week. Now, this also means that for approximately six months, he'll not be able to go out in public and his immune, as his immune system regrows and gets back to normal. Now, he's already been told he will most likely miss this year's family Christmas gatherings. So, if Orion were only looking for short-term comfort and cure, this is not comfortable or easy, nor would it be the option he would have chosen. However, because he wanted to have a long and healthy life, this route was the only real option as the medicines that were helping support his numbers stopped working very well. So he chose to give up short-term comfort for some short-term pain and discomfort and troubles for long-term gain in health. Now, as an update, so far... Ryan's doing actually surprisingly well. As of the writing and recording of this service, he actually feels great. However, he has chosen to do the harder, more uncomfortable procedure because it will benefit him in the future. And as the doctor said, he could move from feeling great to feeling terrible in less than 24 hours. I will update things again more next week. Now, while Ryan is dealing with this health issue in this world, the principle is the same when it comes to us realizing that this world is not all that exists or will exist. And since we can't take the wealth from this world with us, we might as well use what we've been given by God for loving God and loving others and storing up for ourselves treasures in God's eternal heavenly kingdom. For us, what does this mean? It means the discomfort of loving those difficult neighbors and treating them well, even when they might be hostile to us. It means if a family member struggles with any challenge, from a mental illness to an addiction, from a lack of focus to immaturity, we don't break off relationships with them. We patiently do the hard work of telling them the truth in love, even when they don't like it or like us, and then faithfully remain and maintain relationships with them as best we can. It means using our money and resources not just for our own benefit, but to have the biggest be or best benefit for the most people. It means not worrying so much about having a comfortable home or the best computer or car for us, as it means sharing our cars and computers in our homes with others to help us all be benefiting or be so that we can all benefit from what God has given us. For the work of God and for the growth of his kingdom, that's what we're supposed to use our time, talents, and treasures for. And you know, I've witnessed what this looks like in a practical way with our Adullam Camp Ministries. Take the canoes and the canoe trailers. Most of the so-called Adullam canoes and canoe trailers are actually owned by individuals who, after purchasing them, allow their canoes and their trailers to be used by Adullam. In exchange, the ministry tends to restore them and repair them when they get damaged, as needed. You see, if we can't take it with us, why hoard it? Why not share it? And if you're only going to use a canoe three or four times a year, why not allow it to be used 30 or 40 times a year by sharing it with someone else and storing up treasures 
that last forever in God's kingdom. In a much more in-depth or serious way, what this looked like back on January 8th, 1957, was a, a gentleman by the name of Jim Elliott, a friend of his, Nate Sait, who was a pilot, and three other missionaries. They were trying to make contact with an unreached people group called the Hurani. Unfortunately, despite some positive initial meetings, internal tribal jealousy led to a small group of Hurani coming and killing these five men. When news broke of the deaths of these 20-year-olds, uh, it was considered a huge waste of life and potential. But when that happened, Elizabeth Elliot, wife of Jim, released a quote from Jim's personal journal. It goes like this. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. He understood he couldn't live forever, and if it cost him his life to gain a pro a a blessing in God's eternal kingdom, that's not a foolish, even an extreme situation. It's not a foolish investment. This is a variation on a 17th century English nonconformist preacher, Philip Henry, who made this statement. He is no fool who parts with what he cannot keep when he is sure to be recompensed with that which he cannot lose. Same idea storing up for ourselves eternal treasures in heaven by using what we've been given in this life. Folks, while this is an extreme example with the death of Jim Elliot, Nate Saint, and their friends, and while it was tragic, there was still a blessing. The wives, Rachel Saint and Elizabeth Elliot, went back and began to continue the work of Christ with the Hurani. These two widows modeled in their day-to-day -day life forgiveness and a refusal to seek revenge, which was considered strange from the Huroni's point of view. And it led to an interest in Jesus, and many in that tribe, including many who were participants in the killings, became believers in Christ. Now, admittedly, this isolated group, when they came in contact with the 20th century, did have some challenges, as any group would. But a significant positive change that was noticed was an end to a cycle of honor killings and vengeance that had gone on for generations within this tribe and with between this tribe and their neighboring people groups. So let us realize, while this world is temporarily, if we live accordingly, realizing that we can't take this world and its wealth with us, but instead use what God has given us, to love and serve the people around us, even as in extreme case, Jim Elliott, Nate Saint, and their fellow missionaries did, while it's sad, these men did make a blessing that will have eternal results in the lives of those people that came to faith in that they will be spending eternity with God, and also realizing that they themselves will be blessed somehow in God's kingdom. Again, the quote from the, from the journal, he is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Now, since this world is temporary, let us make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him, the Lord, so that we might be able to store up for ourselves treasures in heaven. And as I told you the story, Rachel Saint and Elizabeth Elliot going on and living with the very people who killed their husbands, the question is asked, how? How could they find the strength to do such a thing? And the answer was to focus on the Lord, His ways and His promises. As we do this, we will be shaped by what we live. But, and we are shaped by what we fill our hearts and minds with. Just as my grandmother said, you know, who you make your friends will shape who you will become. And so what we read or watch or put into our hearts and minds will shape how we think and how we act over time. And this is why the Christian disciplines of regular weekly worship, personal prayer and Bible readings shape us as God's people. So how do we get the strength to live with the courage and the forgiveness and the grace of Rachel St. Elizabeth and Elizabeth Elliot? We pray. We read scripture. 
we worship God. Every year we are taught, we teach the camp staff about growing in their faith, and they always say that in the summer when they're working in a Christian community, daily reading their Bibles and praying together before and after camp, they all describe how they tend to grow in life and faith and grow deep with God. But when they go back to school and focus on their schoolwork or hang around with friends who are not Christians, their focus shifts. And it shifts, and as that shifts, so does their thoughts and their behaviors to some degree. So this is why Peter wants his readers to keep focused on the Lord and on his Bible teachings and promises. Because the only way we can train ourselves is not to store up treasures on earth, but to store them in heaven forever, is to regularly read and think about God and his promises. And to realize, really and seriously, this world is temporary. And since we can't take it with us, let's use the wealth and resources we have to help others and to be a blessing in such a way that we can grow in eternal rewards. Now, finally, Peter goes on to say that while we can't take it with us and we need to live accordingly, we need to make every effort to live as God's people, trusting in Jesus and making a, that he will take a, Jesus will make a place for us in his kingdom, as we practice the faith, we need to not only be aware of distractions from outside the faith, but as Peter warned us earlier, especially in 2 Peter, we need to be warned about false teachers and false teachings. Even within the Christian church, there are false teachings that can come and go and lead to all kinds of destruction. And these false teachings mostly come in two areas. There are two primary areas both in Peter's time and in our time. One of them is a kind of legalism that says we need to be good enough to earn our way into God's kingdom, so it puts all kinds of pressure on us to live rightly and do the right things. Peter explicitly says that that is not worth it. We cannot be good enough. Christ wants to forgive us and wants to freely give us this gift and take the pressure off us. The other error the one that Peter explicitly names is lawlessness. That is, God's going to forgive you anyway. Jesus died on the cross for your sins, so it doesn't matter how you live. Go live however you want. God will forgive you, and it'll work. It's kind of like the guys I knew growing up in high school who would sometimes make time to go to the beer store, pick up the booze so they could get drunk and party all night, but on their way... They would go to church Saturday night, if their church had a church on Saturday night, so they could sleep in Sunday morning and deal with the hangover. Somehow, they got it all mixed up. I told them that at the time. They didn't quite get what I was saying. The fact is, if we love Jesus, we're going to live in a way that honors him. And so we're going to follow his teachings, not because we have to follow them to earn our way into heaven, but we follow them because we love him. And we know that he has our best interests at hand. And so he wants us to store up for ourselves treasures in heaven by using the resources we have in this world to bless and serve others. It's not a sacrifice. Ultimately, if you think about it, as we said before, if we avoid the false teachings of thinking we have to earn our own way to heaven, takes the pressure off, or we can just do whatever we want, which actually only causes people to think we really don't believe, then we can be used by God to show and tell the world His ways are different. So in conclusion, let us resist the temptation to live as, this, as if this world is all that there is and will last forever. Because neither we will last forever, nor will our world. Instead, Jesus promises this world will end, and there will be a new heaven and a new earth, which will be the home of righteousness. That is, will be God's eternal kingdom. And so, we can store up for ourselves in that eternal kingdom, by the, for ourselves, by living God's way in this world. And just as James Elliot and Nate Saint and their friends showed, dying in the jungle of Ecuador, their deaths were not in vain because they helped an entire tribe come to faith. They had an eternal result in people spending eternity with God. So what does that mean for us? 
Be willing to deal with short-term pain of giving up comfort here and now for a long-term eternal reward. Because we can't take it with us, right? And we are no fool if we give up what we can't keep to receive that which we can never lose. And so let us live Jesus' ways and make a difference in other people's lives around us. And as this happens, others will be changed. And if we can beware of the false teachings and avoid them, we can be used by God to continue the work that, with this being the 149th anniversary of St. Andrew's Carroll Church, we can pass on to the next generation and continue to help people find the peace and joy and strength that God gives. So, we can't take it with us. Let's invest in God's kingdom and let's continue to help the faith go not from our generation, but to the next generation. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, help us to take Peter's teachings to heart and realize that since we can't take it with us in this mortal world and its wealth, let us deal with temporary discomforts by using what we have in this world to store up for ourselves eternal treasures in heaven. Let us invest in God's kingdom by loving others, by laying down our lives in acts of service. Such investments that the Ecuadorian missionaries did so long ago had an eternal result in the Huronai tribe and in their lives, as they discovered forgiveness and the love of Christ. May we avoid the pride of, or the pressure of trying to earn our own salvation, or the lawness of thinking how we live doesn't matter and just do whatever we want. Help us instead live in such a way that we will model for another generation the blessings and the benefit of storing up treasures in heaven and living and passing on the faith to a new generation. We ask this all in Jesus' strong name. Amen.
let us go to God in prayer for our needs. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, on this which would have been the 149th anniversary of St. Andrew's Carroll, we, as we said before, we thank you for all those who have passed on the faith to us. Help us in this year, day and generation to continue living out our faith in such a way that helps us to pass it on to the people of the next generation. God, give us wisdom. As the virus numbers are continuing to increase, again, we pray, Lord, that you work in all of our hearts and minds to find ways to stay in contact with people, but to do it safely. Please, Lord, as we continue to ask for your guidance to be at work in our government leaders around this virus and around so many other pressing issues, help our leaders federally, provincially, and municipally to discover your will and your ways. And Lord, it is in times like this that we need your guidance and help, especially for the schools that they can safely teach, whether it's elementary, secondary, or even post-secondary education. Help our children to keep on learning in a difficult and unusual situation. And I think of my daughter who's student teaching right now in London, keep her and her school safe. And as she's getting to student teach with a friend of hers she grew up with, God, we ask that you would bless all of our teachers and our educators. We pray for those numbers of social gatherings that have had to be reduced. We'd help people to find ways to mark birthdays, anniversary, and other special events safely and significantly. We also pray uh, with all of this going on that you would be with those who are stressed out and worried in these days. I pray for the young people trying to find jobs and start careers in the middle of this pandemic. And we continue to pray for the ministries of our two churches, especially as we figure out how to navigate this fall with Sunday School and Youth Group, which it looks like Youth Group will be starting online this week. Lord, we continue to pray for others who are facing health problems. In particular, we think of those with cancer, whether it's Frank or Blossom, Lisa or Nancy, who are at various stages and situations. God, we thank you that Lisa's gotten through our first round of treatments, and we pray that you'd be with her and guide the doctors and nurses in a special way. We pray for also for a family friend, John, who has been identified with some cancer and is beginning, hopefully, will get a final diagnosis and begin treatment soon. We continue to pray for those um, who are dealing with other health problems. Sandra, who's recovering from a small stroke in August, we, we pray that you'd be with her. We continue to pray with our member of our church, Bill, who is in hospital. And we continue to pray for Jim, who I hear is doing quite well at home now. Bless him and Betty and help him to continue to adapt and grow stronger and be more mobile. We also, of course, God, pray for my son, Ryan. Last Saturday, he got a new bone marrow a little over a week ago. And we pray while he has a long road to recovery, we praise you that these first steps have been very good and he's been responding to any treatments and any uh, side effects that have to be dealt with. Lord, we continue to pray for him. And we continue to pray for all those who are mourning the loss of loved ones in this COVID time, which is not allowing them to remember and mourn in a normal way. And we pray for any other concerns that are weigh heavy upon people's hearts and minds. Lord, hear our silent prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for hearing our prayers. Answer according to your will, power, and might we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.